as we bow to our knees or bow at the waist or whatever we are comfortably able to do. Sometimes it's hard to know how to approach you, God. The mighty master of the universe, the creator of everything, including our rebel planet, the master who, who wants to hear from us, it loves to hear from us, listens to us, responds to us, it's just incredible. It is so incredible that we, we can pray to you and you want us to pray to you and you respond to our prayers to you. Lord, you've heard uh, the things that we've expressed out loud here today and the things that we've expressed in our hearts just between us and you today. Lord, please come very close. It's, it's not just the answers that we seek, Lord. It's also that kind of that unspoken part where we and, and those we've prayed for feel your presence coming close to them. Please, to each one of us, help us to feel that presence. Help us to be blessed with that today. Lord, we're living in a dark time a frightening time, but you've promised that there are better days coming. Oh, how much better. I didn't understand how awesome it would be to live in a, in a world where there's no pain, suffering, sickness, or death. I, I understood a little bit when I was younger. I'm understanding so much more as I get older. And, and as we are experiencing some of the things we're experiencing, Lord, just soothe us, comfort us, fill us with that knowledge, that comfort, that peace that comes from knowing that your promise is sure, that the day is coming when there will not be any more sickness, any more pain, any more suffering, any more death, and no more need for tears. Oh, Lord, let that day come soon. Let us be ready. And let us leave the service today knowing that it's been an awesome thing to be here with you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, church family. How's everybody doing today? I love my church family. I want us all to make it. I want us all to make it. Every one of us. One of the key ingredients to making it is faith. Faith. Right? Faith. What is faith? What is faith? So, you know, we, we're, we're looking at, at uh, 2021. The year of the family. We've talked about a, uh, a vertical. Strengthening our families. We're wanting our families to make it. Growing our families for the kingdom. I've got a picture in my, in my dining room of the second coming of Jesus. And all these families are sitting there, you know, they're just looking up and it's families together. And I, and I want you to picture that in your mind. Your family. Your family awaiting that moment. What are we going to say? I love that song. You can, I can only imagine. 
can only imagine. Right now, we've got to have faith. So, where do you get faith? Where do you get faith to make it through the hard times? It's not easy being a family right now in 2021, is it? There's a lot of, lot of challenges, a lot of struggles. There's a lot of distractions. But where does that kind of faith come from? Brian read a scripture to you uh, in, in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. This Bible here will change your life. Uh, maybe you're right now, you're a little shaky on your faith. And maybe, maybe you're just trying, like me, you know, at one time in my life, I was trying to figure out what life was all about. And, uh, and I didn't, uh, you know, maybe I wanted to have faith, but I didn't have faith. You know, maybe I wanted to believe in something, but I couldn't. You can't make yourself believe in something you don't believe in. You know that? You can't do it. But I'm telling you, uh, if you're having any kind of doubts or, or any, any type thing like that going on in your mind, the very best thing you can do is run to Jesus and run to him. And you and just open this Bible up. You know, I, I say Psalms is real good. John, the gospel is really good. Uh, maybe you might have a, a younger church, uh, a, a younger family or somebody in the church maybe even might ask you a question that, you know, where could I start at? You can't go wrong starting in the book of John. You can't, you can't go wrong starting anywhere in the Bible, but you can't go wrong starting the Psalms. You know, a lot of times when you don't know what to say, the Psalms will speak for you. You know, when you just can't even get the words out and to say, God, you don't even know what questions to ask God because you don't, it's kind of like your starting point. The, the psalm, the psalmist is really good to do that, just to get started in everything. But, um, you know, we want to look at faith. Faith is something. Faith is, is a conviction. Uh, faith is a, convi a conviction that God's word are true. That you can stand on these promises. That you can believe these promises even before you see any, any, any an event or got any reason that you just go ahead and say, I'm going to dare to believe that this right here is truth. I remember when, when, when I was really, really convicted that God was calling me in the ministry. And, and um, I was sharing with my family that I was going to sell the farm. And that uh, now this is a farm that, that my family, my mom and dad, had signed on the dotted line on, put their neck on the line, you know. And I'm telling them that, you know, that I'm, I'm going to push this aside and I'm going to go in the ministry. And, and, and there was a, a lot of people thought that we had went crazy. That sin, they did. They, that I was carrying this, this, this holy thing a little bit too far. But I, was, but I was convicted in my heart of hearts that God wanted me to share with others there's really a God, that God's not dead, that he really is alive, that he really does love us and he really cares. And I remember I, to, I, I was telling my dad, I said, you know what? I said, if, 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 if there's not a God, then what difference does anything make? Think about it. What difference, do, if there's not really a God, what difference? What difference does anything make? But if there is a God, I'm doing exactly what he wants me to be doing, preparing a world for his soon return. And so that to me is conviction. So join me in prayer, please. Father in heaven, here we are. All different walks of life. The thing we know for sure is that you love us and that you care about us. And it's with your everlasting love that you have drawn us here today, Lord, because you want, to, you want to strengthen our faith. You want to grow our faith. You want to prepare our families for the kingdom. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. I want to share a scripture with you in Romans chapter 4 and verse 20. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. What I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to share this, I'm going to share this verse here from the New Living Translation because I just like the way this sounds here. And, uh, but you can read it in your, in your version, whatever you have, and go back and just think about this. Abraham, Father Abraham, it sings songs about him. Abraham, now listen to this. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. I think the new King, King James says he never wavered in unbelief. 
He didn't allow anything to distract him. He didn't allow any, any doubt cause him not to believe the promises of God. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promises. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and, he, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God was able to do whatever he promised. The New King James says, till he was, till he was fully convinced, he, he, he praised God, till he was fully convinced that God could do what he promised. Now think about that. It's, he stood on the promises of God, and even though there might be doubt in his mind, just like it is in our mind, right? Because we're humans. He, he didn't allow that to cause him to waver until he got to the point that he was fully convinced that he could do, that God could do what he promised. And that's, that's a good starting point right there for each one of us with our faith. That, that we can just dare to believe, stand on the promises of God, and believe that He can do what He has promised He could do. And just praise Him and thank Him till you get to the point that you do believe, that you are fully persuaded. Now, that's a good place to start. Just go ahead and start. It's the only hope we've got anyway, right? It's the only hope we've got anyway, and that's exactly what He did. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit, it was recorded for our benefit also, uh, to assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus from the dead. I want this kind of faith. I want this rock-solid faith. Just like, the, just like the oak tree is in the acre, and every promise that God has given us in this Bible right here, the power to fulfill that promise is in it. He wants us to stand on these promises, to trust these promises, to have faith in these promises. That's what faith is. That is what faith is. So, now, we can't study about faith without going to the hallmark of, of, of fame, the hallmark of fame for all faith. That is Hebrews chapter 11. So let's run to Hebrews chapter 11 here and let's look at this. Because I want this kind of faith for myself and I want this kind of faith for my family here. I want it for my church family. God says we can have this kind of faith. This is, you don't have to wander around. Like I used to wander around just doubting everything and wondering why things are happening and wondering what's, what's going to be taking place. Uh, in, in the future, we can have faith and confidence that there is a God and He does have a plan. Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are invisible, which are visible. So, God, you know, we, can't, we can only see what we can see, right? But we're, we're learning here that, that the things that were made were made by something that we can't see. I mean, now you think about it, there's got to be more to this life than what we know. There's got to be more to this life. God can create something out of nothing. Are you in an impossible situation right now? Is it humanly impossible? Why do you think all through the Bible God allows His children to get into humanly impossible situations? I could just imagine, uh, you know, right, the children of Israel running from Pharaoh and his army and coming up to the Red Sea and go, well, now where do we go? Where do we go now, Moses? I mean, here's a mountain on one side and the Red Sea on the other, and here comes Pharaoh's army. Humanly impossible situation. I want you to know, you might have a humanly impossible situation right now going on in your life. Maybe that humanly impossible situation is you've got doubt. And you just can't seem to overcome that doubt. It just The more you think about it, the bigger that doubt gets. I want you to know, the more you focus on Jesus the bigger he gets, and the smaller whatever this other is. And it could even be doubt. So 
God allows us, to, all through the Bible you see that when, when God's people get into humanly impossible situations, and that's when God comes through because God can bring something out of nothing. He, he can do that. Now, I love Hebrews chapter 11 talks about all the heroes of faith. Enoch is one of my heroes of faith. He walked with God. I mean, it was a bad time. We think we live in a morally bad time. Enoch, and then, and then, and then right after that, Noah, Noah. I mean, these guys walked, the thoughts of men were evil continually. But you know, there's something that, that's brought out here that's very important. That we need, if you, if, if you want faith, and I believe every one of us want faith or we wouldn't be here. I believe every one of us are a little shaky in our faith. We are, every one of us, because we're human. But, but that God has given us a measure of faith to act on. To act on. And, and, and I want you to know, these guys right here, Enoch and, and Noah, two things that jump out to me that I think we need to take home today is, you know, you know what the two things are? Does anybody know the two things or one thing that these two guys had in common? They walked with God. Out of all these people, you know, all these people knew about God. They knew they were descendants, you know, they, 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 they were told about God. But that they were so caught up, so busy... In, in what uh, in, I think is in Matthew, they were eating, drinking, and giving in marriage, right? They were just caught up in the world so much that they were walking in the world and they were not walking with God. So there is something very, very important about walking with God in your day-to-day -day life, about spending time with God, about allowing God to be part of your life, just reaching out to God. If you seek Him, you will find Him. Faith is a gift that God gives you as you spend time with Him. That's what it is, as you spend time with Him. You know, Noah, they thought Noah was crazy, right? They thought Noah was crazy. I'm sure they did. But, but every, every hit of that hammer was an act of faith. An act of faith. Verse, uh, skipping to verse 13. These all died. Now, all these heroes of faith. Now, think about this. All these heroes of faith... Every single one of them, we get to verse 13, and it says this, These all died in what? Faith. faith. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off was assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that that country from which they had come out, they would have had, had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, and that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. What, what does this say? They all died in faith. You, that means you can get to the end of your life Staring death right in the face. Right in the face. Or you can get in a humanly impossible situation, a crisis, and you can have hope. You can have hope. Now, what does that look like? What does that look like in our families? Do we ever have things happen in our life that rattle our faith? That shake us to the very core? Yes, we do. Because we've got an enemy that's out to get us. How does that look like? How can we apply that to our life? And I'm going to ask Brian to come up. I've asked Brian, I said, Brian, what does faith look like in our family? Why, do we, why would you want to... Why, why, how can we model faith to our family? How can we do that as a family, as a head of the household, spiritual leader? There you go, brother. Thank you, Pastor. I, uh, I was teasing my wife when Pastor Rick asked me to do this and telling her that he was asking my whole family to get up here. <laughs> and if you know my wife, she doesn't mind talking to you individually, but she would die getting up here in front of everybody. And truth be known, I, I get nervous when I get up here too. <laughs> Yeah. I just deal with it a little different, I think, than she would. She was getting anxiety. I let her believe that for a whole day. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> then finally Confession I, is good for I you. finally told her. I was like, you don't have to do that. He was only asking me. <laughs> but 
With that being said, I've made some notes so that I can kind of keep in mind to hear what I have to say. Um, he asked me to share what my definition of faith is and what it means to live by faith. In order to do that, I need to show, tell you what faith used to mean to me. Um, I think it happened last week. Uh, my son uh, shared a text with me that he had with his teacher at school. My kids go to the Adventist Elementary School, and his teacher is Miss Lisa Tonak. And apparently on Friday or sometime that week, um, they, they do prayer requests, and he had asked her and the class to pray for his baseball tournament over the weekend that it would not rain. Because when it rains, baseball gets canceled. And so she texts him and she says, on Sunday, she says, have you been, this is her words, have you been able to play your tournament? Did our prayers work? And his response was, no, sadly not. There must have been a non-believer in the class. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been a non-believer in the class. And she, she replies, okay, that was hilarious. <laughs> but you know, my definition of faith, when I really think about it, used to not be much different than that. I used to think that all the promises in the Bible were for me if I only had enough faith. But that's just simply not true. Bad things happen to good Christians all the time, don't they? Yeah. Back in 2002, my wife got pregnant with our first son. And in February of 2003, he was born. And he only lived to be 12 hours old. The pregnancy was an up and down roller coaster. There were times we would go see our her main doctor, and the doctor would tell her, you know, something's not right. We don't know what it is, but something's not right. Well, then we would go see the professional, the, or the specialist, I should say, in Little Rock, and through his tests and studies, things were okay. And so, you see what I'm saying? It was, it was this roller coaster. And at that time, we were living in Fort Smith. We were attending church regularly. We were even the Wednesday night prayer meeting group. Um, I started doing things within the church that the pastor was asking me to do and encouraging me. And so I was living my life for, for Jesus, the best way I knew how. Well, the day he was born, they took him early. The specialist finally realized that there was something wrong. And uh, so they decided to take him early, which was, he was still along the lines he could have survived. And um, through the whole thing, I was praying and my wife was too, that God would do a miracle and that everything would be okay. Well, as you know, my son's not 18 years old, so the miracle didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen. And when God didn't answer my prayers the way I wanted Him to, I knew it wasn't because of my lack of faith. I've, I had enough. Amen. And I knew it wasn't because I was asking him for something that wasn't along the lines of being good. And so, why, why are the prayers of good people not answered the way they want them answered at times? And you know, I became angry with God about this. Um, it wasn't at first that I blamed him, but I became angry with him because he didn't answer the prayers the way I wanted him to. And I quit going to church and having much to do with God altogether. Now fast forward three years from 2003 to 2006, and I get a job uh, at McKee Foods to drive truck for him. I went and got my CDL license just to get this job. I had no intentions of driving truck for anybody else. And um, I was tired of the job I had, the stress and everything. I was an area manager for a, a restaurant. And I wanted something that was a little slower pace for me. And uh, also, my wife and I were talking about trying to have another child. And we, I wanted something that was going to give me more time with my family. And that's what truck driving at McKee does. So I moved here in 2006, and my wife and I 
And something was missing in my life, but I didn't know what it was. But I had that feeling like something was missing. And so Pastor Mark Lamb, which was also a pastor for us in Fort Smith, when we went there, he left and went to seminary. He was, had just taken the job to be the pastor here. So I had a connection with him. And we started coming back to church here simply because of him initially. We kept coming here because of the people, of course. But through that process of coming back to church, faith has come to mean something very different to me than what it used to mean to me. I've learned that if you have faith, things may go good and things may go bad, but it's still good to have faith. I hear and feel Jesus' presence more when th in my life when things are going bad, it seems like. It seems like in those times is when I really seek Him out all the more. It's not because He's not as constant as he, what He used to be. It's just because of me. And I tend to seek Him out even more when things are not going so good. My definition of faith means to believe or to trust. But I like that word trust. Yeah. And that's what it's come to mean to me is to trust. Faith means to trust. That's what faith is. And I'm fortunate, very fortunate, to have several people here on this earth that I trust a lot. My wife, my parents, uh, and a couple other people that I trust. But you know, a lot of people don't have a single person on this earth that they can trust in. And I think that makes it hard for them to trust in something they can't see. I'm close. The reason I trust in these people is because I'm close to them in my life. I talk to my parents probably at least every other day on the phone. I'm constantly talking to my wife. And because of that, well, because of them being trustworthy and also because of the time that I spend with them, that is the reasons why I trust them. Amen. And my relationship with God is no different. If I'm going to trust somebody, somebody or something, first of all, they have to be trustworthy. And second of all, I have to spend time with them. And that's what I, I use that as an example with my parents and my wife because I, my, my relationship with God is no different. I've learned in my life that if I want to be, if I want to have trust or have faith in God, I have to spend time with Him. Yes. And so I spend time with Him when I talk to Him in prayer. I spend time with Him when I listen to Him by reading my Bible. And then I also spend time with Him when I share with others my experiences and what I'm getting in those first two things. Amen. That, and when I do those things in my life, that's when I really trust God. Amen. With everything that's going on. I've been experienced, uh, you know, another thing, he's never failed me. I fail him, but he's never failed me. Faith is not something that you can just muster up or produce it when you need it most. I have to be spending time with Jesus. And if I'm doing that, then I'll always have enough faith in those moments of need. If I'm not spending time with him, I tend to revert back to the old ideas that I have of what faith is. Of, you know, everything that I need is dependent upon me, you know. Um, promises in the Bible are mine if I only ask and pray for it. But that's, that's simply not true. I mean, look at the message, uh, scripture we just read. All of these died in faith without having received the promise, it says. Mm -hmm. And so the promises that are in the Bible are for people, and they're for everybody, but they're for a specific time and context. And that doesn't mean those t that context applies to every single circumstance in my life. I know a guy that no longer goes to church. He used to be an Adventist, him and his wife. They, raised, they had a business of their own. He told me, he, in fact, he doesn't even believe in Jesus anymore. Mm. And it's sad. And it has to do with the promises on tithe. He believed that as long as he tithed and gave a lot of money, that God was going to bless him. Well, in his, And that's true. God does bless us. But he doesn't always bless us in monetary things, does he? That's right. And that's what his thought of the promise was. Mm. 
And he said that he was given over 20% of his income every week and even going without, you know, going without in his own family. And then when God didn't keep his promise that he thought of blessing him financially, he lost all hope. Yeah. And he said, you know, that's just a bunch of hooey, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, because of it, he no longer goes to church. And so our idea of faith, I think, is very, very important. If we, have, if we know that faith means to trust, then it's totally different than what I described to you in the beginning of what I thought it was. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, For the love of Christ controls us. I like that. God's love is what controls our lives. It controls, it's what opens our hearts up to trust Him and to let Him be in charge. Colossians 2.6, I was reading that this week. It says, therefore, as you have received Christ, the Lord, so walk in Him. Another word for walk, walk is lead your life. You know, the same way we received Him in the beginning, we receive Him when we trust Him, right? Well, that's also how we are to live our everyday lives, is by trusting Him. And I need that in my life daily. And I uh, also have a daily reminder that I try to remind myself of in my life. And it's basically something similar to Galatians 2.20, which says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith or trust yeah. in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So that's what my definition of faith to me today is, is to trust. And that's also how I try to live my life. When I'm faced with temptations, I try to, I try to trust Him more to deal with those temptations for me, you know? And I think, I know that if I was doing a better job of that, if our individual church here was doing a better job of that is a as the Adventist church was doing a better job of, of that there would be a lot more victory over sin in our lives Amen. and as a result of that if that was truly happening and I don't say this to condemn anybody because I'm I'm in the same boat I'm not going to shoot holes in the ship that I'm in but if that was happening people would be coming to our church, knocking the doors down. Amen. Because everybody wants to know to how, how to have victory over sin in their life. Yeah. And, uh, and I want you to know from my experience that it simply comes from trusting in Him. Amen. There's only three things you can do to trust Him. You have to talk to Him. You have to listen to Him. And you have to share with others those things you're learning. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, wow. It's faith. God needs a people. That's what he needs. You know, the last revelation that's going to go to the world is going to be a revelation of the character of God. People need to know right now with everything crazy happening that's crazy that's going on, people need to know that there's a God out there that you can trust, a stronghold, somebody that you can count on. So he needs a people that will not be bowing down to compromise, bowing down to the world right now, but that will be looking forward to Jesus. Uh, in, in Daniel chapter 3, there's a story about these, these young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were, they were placed in a very, very tough situation. They were, they were, they were to, to bow down to the world, bow down to the king, we know, do that, or else. And uh, I love that, uh, you know, they were going to get through in the fiery furnace, furnace and Nebuchadnezzar told them you know either you bow down and worship he says or go in the fiery furnace and listen listen to their response here uh, they said in um, uh, oh Nebuchadnezzar we have no need to answer you in this matter if this is the case our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace he will deliver us from your hand O king but this is the part I like right here. But, and this is the, the very core right here of the message. But, if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you've set up. 
This is what real faith is. This is where the rubber meets the road at here. I mean, come what may. Come what may, King. No matter what happens. Even though my baby didn't live. Even though this didn't happen. I'm still going to trust you. But if not, I will still trust you. I will not, I will not let go of you. You know, we know he's able. He is able. Does anybody here know that God is able? That he's able to get you through? You know, he's able. We know that God can solve the problem. We know that he can get us through this situation. But if not, we, we know that, that God can put food on the table. He can do that. That he can, that he can pay the bills. But if if not, that's the kind of faith that God needs His children to have right now. Rock solid faith. We've got a testimony of a young lady right now we're going to put up on the screen that, uh, that is a powerful testimony. Last night, um, Cindy and I was part of an anointing service, Bridget Kearns. And, and, and um, she shared a little bit, and then we had prayer for her. And one of the young people, there was many that prayed for her. Said just in his prayer testimony, just cried out, God, we want you to heal her. She has been such a blessing to us. She's helped us in this time. She's helped us in that time. And we know that you're able to heal her. But then he said, but if not, we know that you will help us through this. We know that you will help us get through this. That is rock solid faith. I'm going to ask the guys if they would show this video here and then my yeah. name is Bridget Kern and I am chaplain at Ozark Adventist Academy some of you may know that I was diagnosed a year ago November with stage 4 kidney cancer I later found out that it's a very rare form of kidney cancer um, where those who get it don't live very long and um, so I've been battling this cancer uh, for over a year now, last year at this time, I was actually so bad with it that I was bedridden and just about to the point of needing a wheelchair, I could barely walk. And um, at that time, I was anointed by Pastor Mercer and um, I was not miraculously healed right away. But the Lord um, spoke to me through a, a Bible verse that I should wait patiently, and he had heard my cry, and he did. And um, where I had been told by the doctor that I should die by August, I turned around to where I was no longer bedridden, I was able to hike around the school, and get off all my pain medications. The Lord worked a great miracle for me. And I was able to come back to Ozark Academy as chaplain this year. And the Lord has blessed me so much in this role. I'm so thankful. But um, since school started, I've started declining. And now um, <clears throat> I'm back to the point where um, I don't have long to live is what the doctor is telling me. They have now treated me with all the known treatments for my rare form of cancer. So they've done all that they can do. And, um, you know, I am just as glad because this weekend, Pastor Mercer and Pastor Gill are both going to be anointing me again. And I believe that this is a perfect time for God to show his power if it be his will for me to be healed. He's healed me once before, and I know he can heal me again. But I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they would not bow down to the King Nebuchadnezzar statue, and King Nebuchadnezzar was threatening to throw them in the fiery furnace, and he said he'd give them another chance. And their response was, their response was, um, o King, our God whom we serve is able to save us from the fiery furnace. But even if not, 
Even if not, know, O king, that we will not serve your God or gods or bow down to them. And God worked a great miracle for them. So I feel the same way. God is able to heal me from this cancer. But even if not, I will not lose my faith in him. Amen. Because I know he knows what is best for me, for my family, and for everybody involved. If it's my time to go, I know that I'm safe in Jesus' hands. He has promised that. In John 10, 27, he says, My sheep know my voice, and no one can snatch them out of my hand. He says, My father is greater than I, and no one can snatch them out of my father's hands. So I know I'm safe in his hands, and death holds no fear for me because I know I will just be sleeping in Jesus and it will be just like a blink for me that I'll hear his voice when he comes the second time and um, I will see the blessed face of Jesus. Amen. But I have faith in him that he knows what's best and he will take care of me. And there's really no other way to live, really. This world is temporary and we have something better to look forward to. Thank you for letting me share with you. God Amen. bless you all. Amen. Hello, my name is Bridget Kern. I know, I know that you can heal me. That was, she knows that God's able to do that. He's already worked a miracle in her life. He knows, she knows that he's able. But if not, She's, she's still going to worship him. Because she, she does not worship him for what he does. She worships him for who he is. He loves her. He's got her back. I don't know what you're going through right now. But I want you to know that God loves you. And he can use whatever you're going through right now. Brian kind of touched on this. A lot of times when we go through harder times in our life, it puts our focus on Him. Sometimes God uses things to draw us. He, uh, looking back on my life, uh, Cindy and I, yesterday we were talking and we said that, um, she said, do you realize um, 24 years ago today we were going out on our first date? I asked her to marry me on that first date. We had no idea what the next two years was going to be like. We even said something about giving our life to God on our, on our date. God allowed me to go through what I went through for two horrible years. Just rocked my world. But if I hadn't went through that, I would not be who I am today. I would not be here today. Now, I want to close today with, with a song, uh, a testimony song that pretty well says it all. Now, this is a little bit different the way we're doing things right now because this is the year of application also. The whole reason we're, we're approaching the messages and giving the testimonies the way we're giving right now is so that you will apply this to your life. It's one thing to hear the message. It's another thing to apply it to your life. And that's what we feel that God's impressed us to do here. So take this testimony that you're about to hear and take it home with you. And this is going to be our closing song also. We're very, we're very thankful for the life that God's called us to. And my husband travels with me some, but is not here tonight because he has baseball. Can everybody uh, he hear is that? coaching baseball, a 15-year-old Need to turn it up a little bit, And, and it's please. a pretty big deal because this is... The first time he's worked in about eight years, um, he has been recovering from a brain tumor. And that uh, is something that happened pretty early on in our marriage. And it's, you know, as newlyweds, you just never expect, you know, when the health problems happen, that, that you would hear the words brain tumor come out of the doctor's mouth. And I'll still never forget uh, meeting with the doctor, finding out that Martin was going to have to have surgery, and hearing that it was possible that after the surgery, Martin wouldn't even remember who I was. Well, sure enough, that, that first time I got to see him after his initial surgery, as soon as our eyes met, he said, Laura Story, 
I thought, oh, he remembers me. <laughs> and then he said, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I realized that he knew exactly who I was. He just had no idea that we were married. <laughs> Which is really, really weird news to break to your spouse. <laughs> And I, I don't remember exactly how I informed him of this, but I'll never forget his response. He said, we're married? Yes! <laughs> Which is the best way that can go down. <laughs> but i like to share a little bit of, of our experience, because I, I know in a room this size, there's probably a lot of you, that there's been something in your life that hasn't worked out the way that you thought it would. Something that, that you've prayed that God would fix, and for some reason, he's, he seems to have left it broken for now. And for us, we're so very thankful that Martin is alive, because we, we, we weren't sure whether he would live through any of it or not. But I'll be honest, he lives with some disabilities. He lives with a, a vision deficit and a memory deficit that really make life hard. And anyone that has a disability or lives with someone with a disability knows that it, um, it just turns your world upside down. And it's been hard for us spiritually as well because we, I've believed since I was a little girl that God is all powerful and that God is all loving. And I know that he, he can heal Martin just with the snap of a finger. So it's hard sometimes to understand why that healing hasn't come yet. And I pray pretty much every day, God, if today is the day that you heal Martin, I promise to give you all the glory. And I feel like every time I pray that, I hear God saying back to me, just in that small voice where God just speaks straight to your heart. I hear him saying, I know, Laura, but what if the healing's actually a process? What if it's a long road that involves more sleepless nights than you ever imagined? Involves more faith than you ever thought yourself capable of? Will you still give me all the glory? And so I'm learning to say yes. <laughs> I don't want to say that it's easy, but I'm learning to say yes. I'm believing in faith that just because I don't understand God's plan, it doesn't mean that he isn't a good and faithful God with a good and perfect plan. So this is a song about asking God to open our eyes to see the blessings in the midst of our trials. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. And we pray for healing, for prosperity. And we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all Sky. 
Please forgive me for going a little bit longer today, but uh, I don't know what you're going through. Go ahead and start praising God. Because He's going to bring good out of it. And He will bring good out of it. Father in heaven, we thank you for revealing to us what faith is. How to get faith. And the blessing of Lord of just trusting in you. Bless my family here, Lord. Well, I don't know what's going on in everyone's life, but you do. And I pray that you impress upon them that you've got this. That you're going to pick them up and you're going to carry them through whatever they're going through. I pray that you anoint them with the Holy Spirit, that they can be a witness to their family, to their friends. That there's a God that loves them, a God that cares about them, and a God that's coming back soon to get them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you.